What's up, squad? We back at him again, man, when they thought it was finna end. Thank y'all for riding with me. Well, you know you forever locked in with your boy, Stories with E. At this time, family, y'all know what I need y'all to do for us. Like, share, comment, smash that subscribe button, y'all. We on that road to 100K. And if you new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for being here. It's an honor and a pleasure. So listen, kick back, relax. You can take that seat on the bed or cop a squad on the toilet seat. I got the rest of the show from here. To that one and only V squad, they know the model, man. Listen. It ain't no squad like our squad because they don't mob how we mob. So with that being said, we're going to continue to push, mob, put them numbers up, and dominate 2024. It's our year. If you would like to support the channel through Cash App, boom, it's listed right there. If not, please join the memberships, man. Exclusive content over there. You definitely want to get involved. If you would like to come on the show and tell your story or have a story told through V, jump in that comment section. Or better yet, damn me on one of my platforms. We would love to have you on. Without further ado, Ma, we kicking off a brand new series today, Savage Life. So kick back, relax, AV Ma, let's go. What's up, squad? We back at him again, man, and we jump straight into it. This series right here, Savage Life. Let's go. So now, during this time, let's just say we got a little group of homeboys, right? Now, all of them, of course, a.k.a. the title, all of them live that savage life. They was, like I told you, our neighborhood was nicknamed the Magnolia. So we really had a thing for looking up to that wild New Orleans, Louisiana type of mindset. You get what I'm saying? So, boom. One day, they all outside, normal day on the block, but they broke. They ain't really got no lick that they can go pull. So what they do is they decide to try to go look around for a swap. Now, what a swap is, let's just say... I'm from West Baltimore and I'm beefing with somebody and I can't get up on them. I might call one of my friends that I know over East Baltimore, bring them into my beef, put them on a hit, pay them whatever they looking to pay, and I still get my enemy. So it's like we basically swapping beef. And if you ever get into some nonsense and you can't get up on your opposition, you can come get me and we'll take the hit in my neighborhood. You feel what I'm saying? We label that a swap. So, boom, they calling around. Ain't nobody really giving them no rhythm. They end up catching luck. They call one of their homeboys who they was over to jail with who lived down the projects. They end up getting a hold of him. He like, shit, hell yeah. Matter of fact, I got a little situation that I'm having problems handling. Pull down here real quick. They say, all right, that's a bet. We be down there in 20 minutes. They hang up the phone, jump in the car. They shoes down there. Now, when they get down there to the projects, it's them four. They meet up with their little homeboy who ready give them the hit. Now, let's give a backstory on why this whole situation is taking place now. Now, the situation he handling is he got an older sister. Now, the older sister, she was dealing with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend was more so a.k.a. a shitball. He really wasn't good at hustling. He really wasn't a, a, a profound type street dude. So, boom, he ends up going behind the sister back, which was his girlfriend, hollering at the brother, and he ended up getting work from him. Now, he ends up messing up a package. Long story short, y'all, he ended up being in debt to the brother, damn near half a bird. He ends up running off with the money because while he was dealing with the sister, he was hustling on the brother block. Once he ended up fucking the money up and him and his sister ended up falling out, he went back down South Baltimore down his way. So now the target is down South Baltimore. The brother, they stay over West Baltimore as well as the little savage like boy. So boom. They get down there, he like, look, yeah, man, my motherfucking sister boyfriend end up running off with some money and some pride up damn near half a bird. This is what I do for y'all. This is the block. He ends up giving them all the knowledge that they need. Give him the address. Give him the block that he hustled on. Gave him his personal address, so he thought. But he ends up finding out that the Lord dude, the boyfriend who ran off with the work, he don't stay by himself. Like I told y'all, he a shit boss. So he bounced around from his mother house and he dealing with a little broad that he rocking out with anymore. So stand down there every day. So little homeboy from down the projects, he give him, look, this the block where he be at. This the broad house. Don't bring the mother into it because I really don't want to bring no harm to the mother house. So this the broad address because we really don't give a fuck about her. She involved. She dealing with this dude. She got to take everything that come along with him bump they like all right that's the best so, so boom he asked him like shit what the number is on it he tell him like man you tell us it's four of us he say all right look this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna give all y'all five hundred dollars that's cool because more so he know the lord dudes they just really try and get high this is the one thing about living that street like man a lot of dudes out here they not in the game to make no money they more so in the game just to support their own head but you get what i'm saying so boom he gives all of them the money he jump in their cars dap up they get up out of there now it's time to go handle business so what they say they're gonna do is they gonna go get hit of course they're gonna go grab their drugs so they can get high while they on post they're gonna go post up around the lord dude wait see if they can get an eyeball on them they do just that shoot down the hole grab a milli grab the balls grab a dings they shoot up the lord dude wait now when they pull up his way he on a block he not in no projects he not in no apartments they on an actual strip so you can more so be parked anywhere and keep an eye on this block 
They go ahead, find a little ducked off spot, park the car. They just post it up, scoping the situation. He, they watching him hustle all day. He ripping and running. And he really banging because everything to him is profit because he's hustling the work that he stole from the brother. So they watch him bang off on the block all day. So they probably pull around there like... Four o'clock in the afternoon, they end up scoping the little dude till like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Finally, he jumps in the car. He ready to pull off. So they like, all right, fuck about time. We got his ass. They go ahead, start. They call up. They pull off right behind him. Now, where the boyfriend, where the boyfriend end up messing up is on his way home, he stops and get gas. Bunk. So as they see him raid, as the little savage like dude see the boyfriend Ray approach and he throw his blankets on to make a right into the gas station. They throw their maskers on. When they throw the mask on, they like, shit, we just ready to grab his ass right here, take him to the band, don't do what we do. They like, all right, shit, that's a bad bump. So now when the little dude pull into the gas station, he uh, jumps out the car. He running there to get his one, two. Now as he's running back out, he go ahead and post up, grab the gas pump. He throw it in the car. So he right there looking down at his phone. He not paying attention to his surroundings. Whole time, three of the little dudes jump out. They walk past his car like they ready walking to the store. As they walking past, they just up. Bitch, don't fucking move. You know what time it is. So now as he look back, he look to see if he can run. But like I told y'all, he pumping the gas. Y'all already know how it is. When you pull that gas pump in and you put it right down to the nozzle, that big ass rope right there. So if he was to turn to try to run, he was going to fall over the rope and they was going to get his bad ass anyway. Whole time he throw his hands up, man. Listen, man, I got the bread right here, man. Y'all ain't got to do this, big homie. Y'all ain't got to do this. But he really feel like, man, y'all ain't going to do nothing. We on the gas station. But he can see all of them masked up with the glasses on so they know they not playing. Whole time they grab his ass up, man, bitch, stop playing. They go ahead and trunk him, man. When they trunk him, they pull off out the gas station, leaving his car right there with the motherfucking pump in there. They go ahead and get out of there now when they pull off from the gas station they trunk him they go ahead and pulls up to the track when they pull up to the track it's an abandoned house boom they go ahead and grab him out takes him into the band or they go ahead and get to spanking him around a little bit bitch 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 they beating him around now they whole game plan is all right look fuck it we done already got the little bit of money that we got from big homie he ain't really give us no instructions on what to do with him but we know we got to get us something out of the deal, too. So once they get to smacking them around for real, they say, shit, how much of that money or how much of that coat you still got left? He tells them he got a little bit of money put up at the bro house. And, and he tells them he got a little bit of product left and it's stashed in the car in the little 007 compartment. They like, all right, that's a bad one. I'm grab the keys off his hip. Throw it to their homeboy, man. Go grab that shit. He runs to the car. He grabbed it. Now, the one of the little dudes asks him, like, shit, who at your girl house right now? He like, nobody, man. She at work. She don't get off till 1 in the morning. He like, all right, it's a bet. He throws the other bro the, uh, the, the keys to the car. Once the first homeboy get back, he tell them to, look, y'all two ride to the little bro house. Grab that motherfucking bread out the safe. Bring it back right here. Now, they telling him, like, look, I swear to fucking God, how much money in there? If you lie to us, you already know what the fuck gonna happen. He tell him, like, shit, I got, like, 3000 put up in there. He like, all right, look, this one. I'm gonna do. If you lie, if it's anything less than 3,000, you already know what the fuck won't happen to you. If it's 3,000 on the nose, we gonna let you walk. He like, man, I swear to God, man, it's 3,000. It shouldn't be nothing less. They say, all right, we done already told you what it is. Boom. Two little homeboys, they jump in the car, they peel out. Now it's two of them still right there. They got the little situation under control. Why they got the little dude sitting right there in the chair put together, y'all already know, read between the lines. They right there start smoking the blue and talking. One of them say, shit, we should call bro and let him know everything went good. He like, man, fuck no way, Ray. Call that man while we handling business. We'll go down there and pull up, and pull up on him and tell him in person tomorrow. He like, all right, that's a bet. Boom. About 25, 30 minutes go by. The two homeboys come back and uh, they come back into the track. When they come in there, they come upstairs. He got like a little, uh, uh, he got like one of them little hand box, little mini safes. He ain't got no big safe. He got that little, y'all know the little mini joints. Boom, they're like, man, what the fuck is the code? He gave them the code, they open it. They count it out, I lie to y'all not, it's only $2,900. They say, shit, you know what time it is. They go in and go with they move. Boom, bitch, I told you what the fuck it was. If you lie, man, that's $2,900. Before he can go in and say what he gonna say, one of the little bros just go in and spank him. Bum, bum, fuck it. Now the other homeboy, he like, man, why the fuck is it? Man, don't question me, man, I already told him what the fuck it is. Grab that, grab the uh, gasoline, grab the lighter. We're going to make it do what they're doing. We up out of here. One of them grab the gasoline, the other one grab the lighter. They go ahead and do what they do. They get up out of there. Now, when they get up out of there, they shoot back to their spot. They shoot back to the spot. Now, all of them really looking like, man, why the fuck you do that, yo? He like, man, the fuck, man, fuck is you crying for? I already told you what the fuck I was going to do. And I ain't with all that witness shit. We already let that man walk. He going to be running around knowing what the fuck he did and where this shit. Like, think about it, man. We came and told him we know where to work. We know he got the work. And he got the money that he stole from bro. What the fuck you think he won't be able to put that shit together? No, nah, I wasn't letting you walk. So basically what he's saying is when they grabbed him up, how else would they know that he had product and money 
if this if this information ain't come from the person that he stole it from, aka the brother. So they like, all right, fuck it. And they 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 got to back their homeboy play. What's done is done. Boom, the next day they shoot down the projects, highlight the Lord dude, they tell him the situation. So now the homeboy looking like, damn, y'all off him? He like, yeah, man, what the fuck, what you, what you expected us to do? So now the brother really looking like, I mean, fuck it, he ran off with my money, I ain't got no sympathy for him too. Like I told y'all, this is why we tell you don't get involved in the streets, this the way that it really go. Boom, so they go ahead and dab each other up, they get up out of there. Now when the full savage like boys get back around their way, they got a little situation set up for the night. Now, when I, what I mean by a situation is, it's four of them, one of them got a little broad, she got three homegirls, so all of them got a homegirl that they gonna go see tonight. Boom! Around, get around 8.30 to jump on the phone, call the broad, she like, come on over here, we already got the bottles, we trying to have some fun, y'all acting like y'all scared, come the fuck on. Boom, they jump in the car. Now, when they get in the car, the whole situation is the whole car is filthy, it's all four of them. Two of them got joints on them. They got uh, weed in the car, pills, uh, bottles of liquor. They just riding dirty the whole time they jumps on the highway. They jump off the highway. They get about five, ten minutes away from the little broad house. whole time, I don't know if they was being trailed or whatever the situation was. As soon as they get to a red light, they just see two Baltimore City police cars boxing in from the front. Boom. Two more come from behind out of traffic. Boom, boom. They just boxing in. Jump out. Freeze. Put your hands in the air. Driver, cut the ignition off. Cut the ignition off. Whole time the driver do what he told, but whole time the two bros in the back, they got the pipes on them, so they looking like, man, fuck. One of them go to open the door, but as soon as he opened the door, like I told y'all, it's four time out cars right there, so the police done already got out and they swarm in the car. As soon as the police get to the car, he try to grab bro arm. Now, when he try to grab him, bro is trying to get the joint off of him, I guess, and I don't know, put it under the chair, try to get it away. I don't know what he was trying to do whole time the police see it, he goes to grab it. Instead of him jumping back, and let off, he go to try to grab it, I guess, being in fear of his safety. Now, when he grab it, bro try to pull it back. Whole time the bitch go off, boom! Now, when it go off, and hit the tire mount the leg, ah! All you hear is him fall to the ground. Other officers get so scared, they start drawing their weapons. But, bro can understand the, 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 the severity of the shit he just did. Before they can even bust a move, he just dives out the car onto the ground with his hands out. My hands down! My hands down! Don't do nothing, yo! My hands down! It was an accident! It was an accident! Whole time the officers, they got to respect it because now they got their cameras on. They already noticed that the, the, the kid that jumped out the car laying on the ground with his hands wide open. They go ahead and aid their comrade, the officer. They call for backup, get him where he need to be. Of course, the officers jump straight on bro, get the handcuff of him, twisting his arms up, doing them all dirty. They go ahead and grab everybody else that's in the car. They get the other pipe off of other bro that's in the car. The driver, he's so scared. He damn near trying to hit the gas, forgetting that he didn't turn the ignition off. Wicked and wild situations, yo, all four of them got booked. All four of them got booked for the joints that was in the car, all the illegal narcotics that was in the car, and then bro got hit for uh, the situation that he did on the officer. That was his own little personal charge. He ended up getting like 32 years for that shit, but wicked and wild situations, man, when you living in savage life, and just think, they had just did that previous crime, and look, not even 24 to 48 hours later, look how fast karma hit them. They end up getting booked on their way to go have fun with some females, and the situation ended up going way, way worse. But y'all know what it is, man. Wicked and wild situations. With that being said, fam, let's jump into story number two. Now, mob story number two, man, another wicked and wild one. We're going to bounce to the joint real quick. Now, keeping it rolling with this savage life, we got a well-known hitman on the street. Shorty something vicious. Don't nobody play with him on the streets. They already know he like a wild, wild west cowboy. He don't play. Now, rumor has it is he probably got like six or more under his belt. He ends up getting grabbed up though for a robbery. This is, this is always the ironic thing about things. People get away with the big crimes or so they think and then they get locked up for a lesser charge and they get the same amount of time as if they got locked up for the big crimes that they committed. Boom, he ends up getting booked for a robbery and a pistol. He get over to jail, he fighting his bit, he end up catching a little number, he ends up blowing trial, he catch a little bit. Now, when he start to walk his bit down, let's just say some rumors start coming out that he is flip-flopping sides. He running around with the boys. So now, it's just a rumor. Can't nobody really prove what's going on now. One day, let's just say he from down, let's just say he from Ohio. We ain't gonna use no spots. Now, one, one of the Ohio homeboys run down on him one day. They come in the cell. They actually catch him in the action. They catch him and somebody else in there doing something they ain't supposed to do. Whole time he shut the cell, walk back out. Whoa, my bad, bro. My bad, bro. Now, when he do that whole time, the dude who the hitman, who well known on the streets, he hurry up, get himself situated. He bust out the cell. Yo, come here real quick, bro. Come the fuck here real quick. Whole time the Lord dude scared because he know 
the dude reputation. He know he a well-known hitman. He know he violent. So he hurry up and spin around. Oh, my bad, bro. I ain't even know you was in there doing something. I thought I ain't seen nothing. I just try to holler at you real quick. Listen, go ahead and hand me it. But he like, man, get the fuck in here now. Come here, let me holler at you. Whole time, little dude get scared like I told y'all. He turn around. He go back to the cell and holler at the little hitman dude. Now, when he come in the cell, hitman then already told his company, get the fuck out of my holler at you later. The dude who he was in the cell with, he gets out, he goes somewhere, I guess, to his cell. Now, the person, the homeboy who walked in and caught him, he stepped back in the cell. When he stepped in the cell, Hitman go up under the pillow, he grab his joint. He say, listen, I'm going to tell you one time, and I swear to God, if I repeat myself, I'm pretty sure you already know what's going to happen. You ain't seen nothing. You ain't heard nothing. If I walk out this motherfucker after the date and a motherfucker even look at me like he got a suspicion, you know where I'm going to slam this motherfucker at, right? So the Lord dude, like I told you, he's scared. He like, come on, bro. I told you. I don't even know what the fuck you talking about. I didn't see nothing. I ain't hear nothing. I came here. I, I I just I just turned around and shut the door, bro. I ain't seen nothing. He like, all right, you heard what the fuck I said whole time. He gets out of there. He go in about his business. Now, Lord Hitman, yo, who got caught in a scenario, I guess four, five, six hours later, his thoughts getting the best of him. He like, no, nah, fuck no, I don't even know why I let him walk up out of here. I know he gonna tell somebody. Matter of fact, I got something for his bad ass. Just randomly out of the blue, he walks down to the little dude's cell, knock on the door. Lord, yo, who caught him? He laid back on his bed listening to his headphones. He like, shit, come in, bro, bro. But he don't pay him no mind. He just still looking at the top of the bunk, bumping to his headphones. Lord, hitman, yo, walk straight and stand over him. He tapped his chest. He leaned up to go to take his headphones off. Bro, just come out the dip and get the way in his ass out. Ma, 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 ma. Whole time he hit him like six, seven times. He walks out the cell. He don't say nothing to him. Don't yell at him. Don't he don't say nothing. He just wham out and get up out of there. Whole time just so happened another little dude is walking past the cell. Like two, three minutes later, he look in and see the dude who caught him. He just laid out on his bed, damn near hanging off the bed. But he see blood dripping to the floor. He come in there and get him some help. He called for somebody. They runs in there grabbing. Of course, COs run the camera back. They see bro go in there and they see him leave out. They go in there grab him up. He goes to lockup. So now when he go to lockup for real, let's just say he up however long he was up there. It, it was a little long time, but this is how wild the story is, y'all. Stay with me. Now when he come back to the pound, whole time he come back, the word had already got out why he did this. Shorty, the, the, the word is out that he done got caught and he might be into some uh funny activities. So now when he get back, the little Ohio dudes go press up on him. One of them jump out there like, man, what the fuck going on? Yo, we hearing that shorty walk in on you doing some damn bad shit. Yo, is that true? Whole time shorty wasn't even back on the compound. Let's just say a month. Of course, he done got his hands on another hammer. He like, what the fuck you want some making the same shit? Yo, come in here and holler at me in the cell. Fuck is you talking out here for? I can tell you what the fuck I did it for if you want to know. Whole time he rocking him to sleep, though, something vicious. Now, the little, the, the, the little homeboy... Who supposed to be pressing him? He feel like he getting his shit off. He feel like you know he got his chest poked out. He walk in the cell behind him. Yeah, man, the fuck you gotta explain that. He walks in. He shut the door behind him. All you hear is his back hit the cell door. Boom, man. You look in. All you see is little hit man. Yo, working him the fuck out in the cell. Mop, mop. What the fuck you wanna ask me something, right? Mop. The whole time the little dude who supposed to be pressing him. He's trying to get out the door. Now the door come flying open. He trying to take off. Bro just got the back of his shirt hitting him. He ripped his shirt. So now he just hitting. All bad skin. Mop, mop. Shorty takes off running to the bubble. Whole time, little hitman on his ass running them down. Whole time, of course, CEOs come in. They pop the Sally Port. Bang the mace off. Get both of them cuffed up. Wicked and wild situation. But as uh, little hitman, yo, is getting booked, he started just yelling out, yeah, and I did it. Anybody want to come holler at me about that shit? This was going to happen. Question me about anything the fuck I doing here. And y'all know what time it is. Man, you niggas is ducks. You niggas ain't play with me on the streets. Don't act like you niggas going to question me behind no wall, man. I wear one of you niggas out back here. Whole time he going off. But he's standing on this wicked and wild business, yo. We sitting right there. Mine is blown. But like I told y'all, man, savage life. But with that being said, family, y'all know what it is. Let's jump into story number three. Now, mob, story number three, man, another Wicked and Wild situation. And this one right here, we ain't going to go savage. Like, I'm going to just go a real-life wild story that was that was wild to me. So, boom, right? We got this dude. We got this couple. Both of them is grown during the time, but they've been together since, let's just say, they was teenagers. So, boom, they ends up getting grown. Now, when they meet each other in high school, the boyfriend, he was like the, uh, the high school point guard, popular. He was running around hustling. He had parents who always kept him icy. His father was a hustler. Mother was a doctor. He was one of the most popular school kids. But now, 
Y'all know what that breeds sometimes when you're a spoiled kid as a juvenile. When you get grown, you so used to being spoiled, you don't know how to fend for yourself. So now that they grown, they in their 30s, they in their late 30s, whole time short, they don't know how to adjust. So now he done fell on hard times, a.k.a. he ain't been working for probably like the last four years. So now she's starting to really lose faith in him and she's starting to lose faith in the relationship because it's like you just can't get it together and don't know women want to be with a man who ain't going to never get it together. Like, damn, I've been back in your mood for five years without you working. At some point, you're going to have to shake out of it. So now he leaves out the house one day, him and the girl get into an argument, of course, over uh, financial things. He dip out. He go over his homeboy house. So now they down in the basement. They smoking whole time. The uh, the homeboy reading through a newspaper. He see a hiring ad that say this company is hiring for somebody to dress up as a clown and you know work the parties. So he say it jokingly like shit, man. If you really need a job that bad, you can do this. He show it to him. He like what the fuck be a clown? He like man, that shit money, bro. That shit gonna give you more money than you making right now. You ain't making no money right now. So the dude say all right, fuck it. That's a bet. Whole time he call the people, they hire him right on the spot. Man, you sure you want the job? When can you start? He like, shit, I can be down there tomorrow. They say, man, look, you hire. Be here tomorrow at such and such a time. Bunk. He got the job. He hired up, finished the blunt, run home. He's so excited. He start telling this girl. Now, the girl looking like, uh, I'm happy, but like, you going to be dressing up as a clown? I don't really know. But she she go in and let it be with it be. Whole time, the dude, he, he go in, go to the job. He start working the job. Now, let's say he start working the job for maybe four or five months, but the word around town is, it's like they shaming him. It's like everybody making fun of him and her. Like, the fuck, girl, you running around, your husband running around in a clown suit. So she don't really like that. Long story short, y'all, she ends up stepping outside the marriage. She started messing with this new dude. Whole time, him and her sneaking around. Let's just say they sneak around for another four or five months. One day, this is just how ironic it is. They wake up in the house, the couple, the man and the husband. Boom, they wake up in the house. He tell her he got a job to do this afternoon at this big fancy like house or whatever the case may be. Whole time she say, oh my God, I'm so happy for you bit by bit. But she really not paying in no mind because she really over him. She more so worried about her second relationship now. Whole time the dude that she messing around with texts her like, listen, wear something nice. I'm going to have a truck pick you up around such and such time. I'm bringing you to a nice little situation. I'm throwing a party today. She like, oh my God, that's a bet. Mind you, she not even... Thinking like, where's my party at and where's this party you supposed to be going to? In her mind, that could never be the same two parties. Boom. She jump in the car. I mean, he, he jump in the car. He go to work. About an hour or two later, truck pull up, grab her. She jump in the car. She go to where she been escorted to. Boom. Now, when she get there, she pull up to the spot. Her and the boyfriend, the side dude, they shoot up in the room. They get themselves a little quick one in. Now, when they come back downstairs, whole time, the boyfriend, which is the clown at the party, He's coming from outside the backyard. Now, it's a grown-up event, but it's a kid's birthday party. This is why the little dude who she's messing around with, this is why he holding an event. He like a big boss type dude. Boom, whole time they walk down the stairs, her hair mess, he buckling up his shirt. Whole time the clown come in the living room, which so happened to be her boyfriend. He look up, he see his wife right there with a whole nother dude, and it's obvious what they doing. Like the hair show it, them fix it. All the mannerisms let you know what they just was coming from upstairs doing. Whole time he loses his mind. He see her. What the fuck? Whole time she look up, see him. Donnie. Let's just say that's his name. Donnie. Boom. Whole time he yell her name. He breaks straight in the kitchen. Boom. He breaks straight in the kitchen. Now when he break in the kitchen, he grab that big butcher. He come running out now. The dude, he caught up in a frenzy. He like, what the fuck? Do you know him? That's your homeboy or something? Whole time shorty come straight through the living room. Hit him straight in the chest. Boom. You motherfucker. Drags him down the step. Get to working him out. Now whole time she gets so scared. She don't know what to do. But. It's a party full of people, like it's a big ass house. Whole time people get to running around, knocking shit over, screaming. They jumping on the phone, calling 911. So now the wife yell out, Stop! The police on the way, you're gonna end up doing them. Whole time he snapped out of it, he just looked up and realized that he got a banger in his hand, dripping. He looked down at what he even just did. He just dropped the joint, take off, runs outside, jump in the car. He get up out of there. He flee, jump on the road, he get up out of there. Crazily, never to be seen till this day, y'all. Never to be seen till this day all over. A man falling on hard times. Yeah, he had his ways. End up getting a little gig. You was supposed to back that man. Or just tell him, I can't do this no more. I don't want to be in this relationship. But y'all know the motto, man. Whip in a wild situation. So with that being said, family, thank y'all for riding with me. Well, you know you fell a lot. Then with your boy stories with me. At this time, family, y'all know what I need y'all to do one more time for us. Like, share, comment, smash that subscribe button, y'all. We'll be at 100K in no time from the bottom of my heart. 
I love each and every one of y'all, man. We're going to continue to dominate this algorithm and continue to bump them numbers up. Only thing I ask, like the video, share the video, comment the video, and tell a friend to tell a friend. Rush over here and join that v Mall family. Hey, v Mall, we out. Just speaking it all, we big Jordan. Drop that same Jordan. Just go as far as we can. Just now, we're about to get back. 10,000, 15,000.